procedure for operating the microgen engine is very similar to the whispergen in terms of the lab safety systems. So, of course, very first thing we always do, make sure that our exhaust extractor fan is on. Switch to the on position, adjust the potentiometer just enough so that there's a slight positive suction. The next thing that we'll do for the microgen, it requires two plugs to be plugged in. So the first one is going to belong to the actual engine itself. So this engine, it exports its excess power or all of its power onto the grid. And also the controls are powered from the grid. So the engine will not operate or even turn on without electric power. So it must be plugged in. The second plug is just for the pump control box down below here. So that must be plugged in. You should get a green light here. If the green light is on, then the pump supply box has power. It may look like this. Of course, all that's happened is someone has pressed the emergency stop to turn it off. So you just twist clockwise to release, and now we have power. So the first thing we must do is turn on the pump, the coolant pump for the engine. So just slowly bring it up to speed, and we will hear the engine the coolant pump turn on. So that coolant pump is actually located inside of this box in here, so you'll hear it quite clearly once it's on. The next thing that needs to be done is the open flow must be set up. For the purposes of this video, we're not going to actually do it, but you will find a hose here. This hose is the exact same setup as for the WhisperGen. This must be plugged in to the lab tap over here. Likewise, the open dump flow, this pipe here, this pipe must be put over into the floor hole there so that it can drain out of the lab. Once the hose is connected and the drain is also connected, the lab water supply should be turned on, just like with the WhisperGen engine. So the microgen uses a large plate heat exchanger here to dump its heat out of the system. The radiators are not used for cooling the engine. All of the heat is removed from this plate via this plate heat exchanger. If you don't turn on the lab cooling system, the engine will overheat and shut down on its own after a short period of time. In terms of an overview of the engine itself, this is the flame igniter for the gas supply. This is the uh, Venturi and the mixer valve for mixing the gas supply in with the airstream to burn in the engine's combustor, which is here. Keep in mind that when the engine is operating normally, the combustor will get very hot. So it's important as a pre-check that all pumps and wires and plumbing is all clear of this area here, or it could potentially burn and overheat. The this is the blower fan, so the air gets sucked in here, mixes with the gas, blown into the combustion chamber, combusted in here, it heats the top of the cylinder heads, and eventually the en engine starts to generate power, and that's exported out through these connections here. It goes through the electronics inside of this box. The plumbing is very complex for what it's actually doing. The reason for that is there used to be an absorption chiller over here, but that is now no longer the case. So all of this plumbing is legacy plumbing. It's effectively just a simple linear circuit traveling through the engine all the way around down to the plate heat exchanger and back again via a header tank up here. And of course the pump is in that cabinet. So by tracing out the plumbing you will see how all that works. The most important or perhaps critical aspect of operating the microgen engine is the gas supply. So the propane cylinder has not been brought in, but this fitting here must be connected to the cylinder. Uh, it's important that it's taped using gas rated PTFE tape, and you follow the SOP that outlines exactly how to do it. The important thing is once you've made the connection that you just give a, a brief sniff around the fitting for any trace of gas. If you get a slight smell of gas once you've opened the cylinder, quickly close the cylinder, start again, and redo the sealing. Uh, the second 
most important aspect of the gas supply is the manual shutoff valve here. So in addition to the screw top on the propane cylinder, this valve here will shut off supply to the engine immediately. Uh, so to operate the engine, ensure that this is in the open position. An important note when you're changing the gas cylinder, when, once you install a new cylinder into the engine, it could take up to 10 to 20 attempts for the engine to light. Uh, the reason for that is the system uh, plumbing is effectively airlocked or it's filled with not propane. So the uh, engine could have many failed attempts at starting. All you need to do to recycle the combustion start process is keep hitting the reset button. In terms of operating the engine, you need to ensure that the controller power is in the on position. You must ensure that the emergency stop is not an inhibit, so twist clockwise, and then you simply turn the on button to the on position. The engine will start its startup cycle. Uh, in this case, because we have no cylinder, it's going to fail. Uh, if you're trying to get an actual overview of what the engine is doing, there's a serial port on the bottom here. So simply attach a serial cable to the RS-232 converter here. Bring it over to our lab PC. And then open the microgen APU folder. APU data logger. So you simply open this and then we will get an overview of how the engine is operating. So it's actually attempting to start the engine, but of course there's no gas supply, so it's going to fail. The engine will not even get in to the startup mode if it doesn't detect a coolant flow rate above the minimum threshold specified by the controller, sorry, by the manual. So the engine is continually trying to uh, recycle here. We've got a fault, an alarm here. That's because it's failed to ignite. So when you change the cylinder, you're probably going to see this a couple dozen times. You simply hold reset, and it's going to attempt to go again. You can actually observe this happening. You can see the fan has started to spool up and spin. You'll eventually hear a clicking of the solenoid here that injects gas in. So that's the solenoid going. So it's now trying to spark. You should hear a fast, rapid clicking from the sparker trying to ignite, but of course there's no gas supply, so that's not going to work. To shut down the engine, you simply turn it to the off position, and a good rule of thumb is always to press the emergency inhibit as well. If you're definitely finished with the engine for the session, it doesn't hurt to turn off the actual supply to the control box. It's absolutely essential that the gas supply is turned in the off position, and the cylinder is switched off also at the cylinder itself before leaving the lab. If you're not using the engine for a long period of time, say a couple of weeks or a few months, it's advisable to disconnect the cylinder and store it in the outside yard so that gas is not being stored inside of the lab. To operate the pump, ensure that we have power in our box and that it's not closed here and simply turn the loop here up to the max position. Our program logger over here will show our coolant flow rate. This needs to be above the minimum value specified in the manual or else the engine will not allow you to do anything. Finally, in case there are any modifications to the cooling system, it may be necessary to drain down the engine and fill up the header tanks. I have installed a drain pipe here, so simply place this into a large container and open the valve here and that will drain out most of the system. To refill, close that valve, check the top of the header tank up here and fill on top. Keep in mind that the two systems here are bridged, that was to due to the uh, operation of the adsorption chiller for our applications fill below that mark and stay below it because this system in its current configuration is potentially open.